Ryan in charge of the action. When the bell rings, referee Armando Garcia. All right, fight fans, here we go, and here are your combatants. First, fighting out of the blue corner, he weighed in at 137 pounds from Caracas, Venezuela. He takes a professional record of 38 victories, two losses, and two defeats into the ring this evening. 27 big victories coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, he wears the white trunks trimmed in black, and tonight fights from the blue corner. I give to you the former two-time WBA champion of the world, Eloy Rojas. His opponent stands in the corner to my left. He fights tonight from the red corner, from Ponce, Puerto Rico. He weighed in at a ripe weighing pounds of 137 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, with a professional record of 33 victories, six defeats, Three draws, eight victories coming by way of knockout. He wears the white trunks, and tonight, fighting from the red corner, introducing Ricky Kilo. Once again, here is referee Armando Garcia with your last minute instructions, 10 rounds, and these are your lightweights. Every my piece. So Armando Garcia tries to get his fighters Ricky, over there pay attention. It'll started. be English with you and Spanish with him, okay? We had a nice talk in the dressing room. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. I'll accept punches right here. Nothing okay. lower, okay? Eloy, hablamos en el camarino. Español contigo, inglés con él, okay? Voy a aceptar los golpes aquí, pero no más bajo. Obedeceme en todo momento y protégete en todo momento, okay? Esto está bien aquí. A little bit uh, low down here, but this is okay, all right? Buena suerte, good luck, touch gloves. Toca muerte. All right, both guys decked out in very light trunks. Uh, Kielis is uh, actually a very light blue. As you take a look at the tail of the tape, Dave. Kielis is 33. He is three years younger than Rojas. The major stats are ex the same, except Rojas has a three-inch reach advantage, and we've seen in some other fights, reach can be a huge edge. We'll see if it is here. All right, so we're set to go with round number one. This is scheduled for 10. This is in the lightweight division. Lightweight division, actually 135 pound division. These guys in a couple of uh, pounds over that at uh, 137. Keyless is in uh, trunks that uh, look white on your screen, but they're actually very light blue. So if you want to fine tune your sets, folks, fine tune them. And the guy with a little bit of red on his shoes is Keyless. Keyless hails from Lorraine, Ohio. Has a record of 33 and six. Three draws, eight knockouts, so he's not a power guy, and you don't need me to tell you that. He did have one terrific fight against a guy that you may know, Diabilis uh, Hurtado, former world champ, and he had Hurtado down in that fight, so he has some sort of power. And Eloy Rojas is a former world champion at age 36. He would just love to get one more shot at a title. This is his third fight in the United States this year. He beat the Korean uh, at 126 and then went on to defend that title seven times before he lost to Wilfredo Vasquez in 1996. So it's been a dry spell as far as a world title for him, but he feels like fighting here on the Warriors boxing that he's got a good shot at uh, getting uh, a lot of activity and getting back in action, and that's what he wants to do. You notice right away that Kielis is a southpaw. Southpaw doing a pretty good job holding Rojas off so far. He's doing a nice job with the movement and, and frustrating what Rojas would need to do. And against the lefty, you want to throw the lead right hand, you want to throw the double left hook, and you want to keep your lead foot outside the lead foot of the lefty and try to keep him going in small circles so that you can get off that way and, and change the direction of the shots and keep him in good range. And the lefty obviously just wants to do the, uh, the opposite. Aquiles has just signed, by the way, himself with Warriors Boxing. And that uh, spells a, a, a great opportunity in his first fight here to fight a former world champion, Eloy Rojas, because a victory for him in this scheduled 10 round affair would immediately vault him into the situation where people would be interested in seeing him uh, in some serious prize fights. You talk about at the top of the show about the uh, one fight a year announced uh, for, for 2004. Are you going to get fighters now scrapping to get into that schedule? They're going to keep themselves in the gym more. There's activity for them. It's lined up. And uh, Kielis is an example of that, a guy that was off and now wants to get back and make a run through that whole program. 
Aquinas has been sparring here in Florida with Zab Judah, and I asked him how he handled the speed of Zab. He said, you know something, I think I got as much speed. <laughs> you know, fight is a, uh, well, he looked pretty good throwing that left hand there, didn't he, the southpaw, Aquilas? But uh, if, if you can hang in there and show some speed with Zab Judah, you're amongst the very best, because Zab has got really fast hands. You, ha you hang in with Zab Judah, and everybody else is going to be a, a plotting type of a fighter to you when you get in the ring, and that's why it's good to go in with a guy who will be faster than the opponent you fight. So at 36 years old, Aquilas at age 33, he's got to get it done in a hurry. Is the bell in round number one? Come play in the creek. Seminole Coconut Creek Casino. It's the serious hot machine player's place. And now exclusively at Seminole Casinos, voted best machines by Casino Player Magazine. All your favorites, Double Diamond, Red, White, and Blue, Wild Cherry, and Five Times Pay. Play them only at Seminole Casinos, located at 441 and Sample Road in Coconut Creek. What are you waiting for? Come play in the creek. Well, Dave, there he is, Ricky Kielis, and he's won the first round, in my opinion. Uh, Rojas didn't do enough. A, a good movement by Kielis, and uh, excellent use of his hands, excellent use of his feet, and he was basically on top of the speed element. All right, we'll see how it goes as we come on up to round number two. Bob Sheridan here with Dave Bontempo. Mark Goldberg handling some of the color around ringside for us tonight. Ricky Kielis to the right of your screen, the former world champion, Eloy Rojas, who's going to get a lot busier if he's going to do anything. You know, it's amazing to me that Kielis uh, looks so much bigger. He's only an inch taller, but he's got the, about three inches uh, advantage in reach, and he's trying to use that, getting that right jab in the case of the south on the face of uh, Eloy Rojas. And good head movement here by Kielis as Rojas tries to stalk him down and find an opening for that lead right hand. Instead, he tries to hook here. Rojas is trying to not be a follower here. He'd like to cut off the ring, and with Kielis' movement, he's preventing that. You know, why don't we know more about Kielis uh, with a record of 33 and 6 and uh, three draws and, uh, you know, a dandy of a record uh, for lightweight. Uh, he's been off for three years with management problems, and he just signed uh, with Warriors Boxing. And he claims now that he's in the best shape of his oh life. And in spite of the fact that he says he's 33, he's got a couple of years. And he says because he didn't have the tough fights the last two or three years, now at this stage in his career, it becomes an advantage instead of a guy that's taking a lot of punishment. Hasn't taken the punishment. What you have to do is get in the gym enough so that you get your reflexes back. And he believes he's done that. And he'd like to fight six times in 2004, provided that he could get a, a good one tonight. So this is a real test for Kielis, and he's got the adrenaline of a guy starting over. You know, one time Rojas had a record of 21 straight knockouts. Uh, he had an excellent left hook. You saw the left hook there, but Kielis with his head move and ducked underneath it. I mean, Rojas was a terrific champion uh, back a few years ago. He retired in, in 1996 himself, then he came back in 99. He had three fights, with all of which he won, then he retired again. And this time he's had a, a couple of fights. This is his third fight since retiring. And he said, well, you know, just like I said at the very top of the show about Hector Camacho, what do guys do when they get into their mid to late 30s, and in uh, Camacho's case, into his 40s, and when they retire? Well, they're boxers. All they can do is fight for the most part, and if they didn't prepare for any sort of retirement, and guys from the Latin countries probably didn't make a lot of money during the course of their career, and spent back to camp. They want to give it always one last shot. That's why I have to admire Marvin Hagler. One of the only guys to retire once. Well, if you want to go back a few more years, Rocky Marciano had a pretty good idea. Yeah, but when we uh, came into the money era of the 80s and with casinos coming in, guys were encouraged to come in there and take another stab because the money was better than when they were in their prime. Well, Warriors Boxing, of course, wanted Camacho to fight here and hopefully have another fight here because uh, they feel, of course, he's one of the big name stars over here. The right hand gets through by Peterson, and bounces the head back at Rojas and comes to the closing second of the second round. There's the bell. But Peterson has landed a couple of shots as the crowd looks on here at uh, the Seminole Casino at Coconut Creek. But Dave, uh, I don't think uh, Rojas is busy enough. And that's why Kielis is getting braver and expanding his arsenal. 
with his shots. He's taking more liberties against Rojas. He's to Rojas to stop that with the lead right hand. Take a look at Michaelis on the aggressive end. There he takes a shot, one of the few that he took. But he comes back, gets on his feet, and will get aggressive back. There's the lead right hand we're talking about for Rojas. That's what he would like to come back to time and again. It works against the left. By the way, this fight is sanctioned by the Florida State Athletic Commission. It's a 10-point must scoring system. There's no standing eight count. There is a three knockdown rule in the state of, the, uh, of Florida, and a fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round or get in any accident, headbutts, or anything. I'll explain it to you as we go along. Eloy Rojas with the black trim on his white trunks and in the very light blue trunks is Ricky Kielis. Rojas trying to sneak the right hand in again, and now Kielis trying to mug him on the inside. Also, to keep it straight, uh, Rojas is the uh, guy that has the black shoes, and the guy with the red shoes, uh, at least um, the red trim on them, is Kielis. So, in one of these fighters, you can follow him a little bit better. Now, Kielis tries to pick up the action as uh, Rojas wanted to start the round off fast with the southpaw. Kielis is the one who's doing uh, most of the throwing, and as I say that, Rojas uh, gets busy on the inside here. Rojas uh, took the rust off the gun here in this round. He's thrown some right hands to the body. He's opening it up a little bit faster. He's into a different type of a flow, and he's also helped Kielis turn it up another notch. This is round number three. It's scheduled for 10, a little bit over the lightweight uh, division limit of 135 as they both come in at 137. They had a contract to give or take two pounds, and they both took the two pounds. <laughs> hey, you don't see the give part of those contracts used too much. You just see the take. They always say they're, they're 137, uh, give or take a couple. Well, the one thing that's important in terms of that for Kielis is that he has been in the gym for a good three months. He's got himself in terrific shape at age 33. He wants to get it done right away. The heads came together. You see referee Armando Garcia right on top of that saying, hey, come on, guys, watch the heads now. When you get the southpaw and the right-handed fighter, and especially if there's a little height difference, uh, oftentimes with the amount of bobbing and the head movement that we see by Kielis, the heads can come together. And you get a guy trying to position himself on the inside, trying to set up his punch and get down lower, maybe, and that's when the heads clash. Almost and had it again. Right, and, and Rojas is a very, you know, he's not as busy as I thought he'd be, but he's a guy that gets into a second gear. You get clipped by a looping left hand, but no power behind that time at all. But it's got the adrenaline flow going for Kielas. Rojas is having his best round thus far. A lot of movement by Kielas, but he's not landing a lot. He's got the jab out there, but it's falling short. Well, this is now looking like the stylistic matchup that it appeared to be on paper based on their record with Kielis using the ring and Rojas trying to cut it off. Kielis took liberties on him early, but now Rojas is trying to make this a battle on the inside for himself. You wonder how much a guy that's retired twice really wants to fight, but when you're out of the ring, sometimes it gives you that uh, little bit of uh, idea that, especially when you live in Caracas, Venezuela, you know, it's a tough life down there in the streets in Caracas unless you have money, and so he wants to get another title shot, and he's giving it a best uh, go here in this lightweight fight with Ricky Kielis. It's been the best round for Rojas thus far. In fact, I think Rojas has won the third round. It's the third round ending round. A lot more aggression from Rojas. Eh? His timing looks a lot better, and he's into a better flow than he was in the opening round. You know, Dave, you talked about the uh, Seminole Indians. They've got these casinos in, in Tampa and Immokalee and Brighton, and the new one that opens up in Hollywood, and the Hollywood Casino is a co-sponsor of this uh, uh, series here with Warriors Boxing. I mean, it's just uh, flowing great, but uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, we got the flowing combination here for you. Well, there's Rojas with the lead right hand. We talked about that's how to fight the lefty, and he's gone to that weapon a lot more in the third round as Kielos was susceptible to it. As Kielis comes at him and comes back in a counter, he's countering Rojas, who found a home with that lead right hand in the third round. He did a good job with that. Now that's the experience of Eloy Rojas and why we gave him, uh, at least I did in the third round, I think you may agree with yes, me. Yeah. Okay, and uh, here we go, and let's see if Rojas can keep the pace going now and take it away from this uh, uh, younger guy, uh, Ricky Kielis. When I say younger, he's uh, 33 years of age. So again, he's got to get it done. 
and he wants to get it done tonight. It would be disastrous if he if he drops this fight to Rojas for Rojas situation. Well, now it's interesting because both fighters have shown how they could win this fight. For Kielis, it was the aggressiveness and the lateral movement. And for Rojas, it's the body shot and the lead right hand that might pay dividends later on in this fight. He's done a good job to the body in round three and in the beginning of round four. Ricky doesn't want to be drawn into a war with this guy either because with his movement and, and, and just getting his punch shots out there, he can win this fight. He doesn't want to get into a slugfest on the inside with Rojas at this stage in the fight. Uh, I'm fighting a guy 36 years old, and I know that I'm in the best shape of my life. Drag him into the later rounds and then try to try to uh, take your shots. But you see what's happening now is Rojas is so slick that, I mean, he's landing shots on the inside. The crowd likes it. Look at this fight. Hey, you know, for Kielis, he opened up, and he was doing a good job in his mind in the power department. So now he'll fight Rojas' fight. Rojas is happy with that. It's hard to switch gears back after you decide you want to slug. Well, Ricky's uh, done exactly what I told him that I didn't think was a good idea. <laughs> he's, he's doing exactly what he wants to do, and that's all right. But you're going to pay the price on the inside when you're fighting a guy with the experience of Rojas. And, and while he had a dramatic, uh, you know, a shot that he landed that brought the crowd to attention, look who's winning this inside battle. Here is Kielis opening it up. You know, you see it in other sports, a single hitter hits a couple home runs and he starts swinging for the fences all the time. Ricky Kielis had some early success loading up in rounds one and two, and that's where he wants to stay right now, and Rojas is happy with that style. Needs to throw that straight left hand right down the middle. When he's throwing the left hand, he's going to the body uh, quite consistently. Needs to come up a couple of times with that uh, uh, left hand because if it's true for the right-handed fighter fighting the southpaw to throw the right hand down the middle. Conversely speaking, for the southpaw to throw that straight left down the middle, you can catch the guy too. He's doing it, but again, to the body. You know, I like to see him come upstairs with this one. That will keep Rojas uh, on. This is a difficult round to score. This is a good round of boxing, by the way. Yeah, both guys have been loading up in their power department, taking their best weapons. And for Kielis, his best power shot is in the left hand. He did go upstairs a little bit there. And for Rojas, that right hand to the body. And there's another left upstairs, and now he's fighting Rojas, he's fighting on the inside, takes a couple of shots, and it really opens up. Oh, he's there, Rojas! He's hurting it! Kielis is hurt, Rojas! Or in the closing seconds of the fourth round! Rojas is actually ready to go! He's been working that, and then he finds some room upstairs, and he's able to score with the power shots. Working the body, has Rojas worried about the body. Looks like he's in no hurry to open it up, and then he is. Nice left hand sneaking through, and then Kielis is on overdrive, and Rojas is nearly out. Had Kielis had another minute, he would have been able to finish it. All right, back with a live shot now here at the Seminole Casino in Coconut Creek. Bob Sheridan with Dave Montepo. Mark Goldberg with us and blood streaming from the nose of Eloy Rojas, the former world champ, who's run into a buzzsaw named Ricky Kielis. Kielis had him in trouble towards the end of the round, and he really should jump on him now and don't let him recover and, and recuperate anymore. He had to jump right on him, trying to crack him right in the nose again. And Kielis showing a bit of patience here, but boy, everything that I've advised him to do, he hasn't done, and everything that he's doing seems to be working, so I'm not going to instruct you anymore, Ricky. You just do what you're doing. You're doing fine. Well, you know, that's sometimes... The fighter knows when he can throw the textbook out the window. And this fight is rising up that way for Kielis because he's been able to get to Rojas early. He decided he could win this fight slugging and then boxing when he felt like it. But he is hungry to stop him now. Well, in the face of uh, Rojas is a mess with blood that's coming from the nose. It's all over his face and around his eyes and whatnot. But it's uh, just a nosebleed. It's messy, but it's not that important right now. It's important for him because if he has a broken nose, in fact, it uh, can be very painful. But that aside, 
Aquiles is just touching him up, doing what he has to do. And all he has to do is land one more big blow on top of that nose, and this guy let it sit wide open. Eloy Rojas in the white trunks with the blood all over him in the black trim is a former world champ. With the career and won the 126 pound division championship and defended it seven times. Always been a real good technical boxer. And it appeared things were reversing in his direction after the third round and into the fourth round. But then he saw what happened at the end of the fourth. Oh, he gets nailed with another left hand. Boy, we talked about that power left for Kielis, and now here's Aloy coming back with a little bit of a second win. Oh, he gets cracked upstairs again, Dave. He's getting taking some clean shots. Four shots, big ones here by Kielis and Rojas walking into bomb after bomb here by Kielis. And he may not be a knockout puncher, but he's certainly trying. Well, he's landing, uh, as Muhammad Ali gets credit for so many knockouts in his career, really TKOs with accumulation of punches. And that's what this kid's doing here now. He's landing a lot of punches. Every once in a while, Eloy reaches down, as all great former champions do. They have that heart of a champion, and they never would have been one. And he's trying his best he can to hang in there, but Kielis is hitting the heavy blows and landing them. Now he resets himself. Not much movement now. He's ready to just bore right in there. He's had the success, and he's away from the movement, but he crushed him with another. Remember I said about him coming upstairs with that left hand? He cut him with a nice stiff left hand again. Well, Kielis had eight knockouts in 42 fights, but he's fighting like only eight guys have gone the distance against him. Big cracking left hand again as we come to the closing seconds of the fifth round. The, belt round again, the fifth round. That's another Kielis round. Boy, this is a good fight. Yeah, and Rojas is uh, making Kielis extend himself, and Kielis is so up for this. Having been one and understanding the, uh, the fighter's mentality and viewpoint, it's a one very well in this fight. That's a great kick. Right? This is round six as Rojas tries to keep the pressure on by Kielis, but it's Kielis who is right in front of him now, getting away from the side-to-side -side movement that he had the early going. And now he tries to put pressure on Rojas. Rojas doing a little bit of movement, pulls straight back, now steps off to his right. Tries to touch him up with the left hand, but can't seem to get through. And Ricky lets go with the looping left hand. And again, that left hand has been more successful since it came up. Nice counter inside shot by Rojas there. Look at this. That's a Purnell Whitaker move. Yeah, sure is. Only Purnell would stay down there for about 10, 15 seconds. Like that. Remember him fighting uh, Julio Cesar Chavez in the Alamo Dome in uh, San Antonio. He was down like that all the time and pushing the daylight out of Julio Cesar. We'll see the shot is back in the news because he wants to fight uh, the guy we're going to see, Hector Macho Camacho. And while you get two guys that have 
test that piqued me a question. They would still play a mutant league in Mexico City. The old battle between the guys uh, from Puerto Rico and the guys from Mexico. That, that, that never dies. Right now, we got a pretty good prize fight going on right here. Seminole Open and Creek Casino on Bob Sherman, Dave Von Temple, Mark Goldberg. Both guys settling in just a very tough fight right now. Gillis has done a good job boxing. He takes an opportunity here with the slugging. But when the slugging wasn't available to him this round, he boxed smartly. And now he's able to shift and load up a little bit. Closing seconds now, the sixth round. And like the finishing flurries in the previous rounds, look at Tilas go to work now. There's the bell in the sixth round. You know, I thought that uh, Rojas had a chance to win that round. It was one of his better rounds of the fight. In fact, I may still give him the round, but it was certainly his, his, his best performance back in the third round. What do you think, Dave? Gillis made a bit to steal. I think Rojas may have still held off, but it's showing intensity by Gillis that he wants to finish rounds that strongly. That's an indication of good condition. As Gillis on the outside, he's boxing, taking what's being offered, then boom! He's able to change. The left hand gets in. He knows it's the end of the round. Rojas backing up, and Gillis able to shift into a power mode. Gets on the inside and, and tries to do a lot of good inside work and able to again. I'll bet the judges split on that round, Colonel, because Rojas did a lot of work in it. You got to figure at least somebody will give it to uh, Gillis because of his late play. Look down at my my score sheet based on the looping hand. Uh, and the, and the late flurry, I, I, I scored it an even round. And, and my scoring is kind of try to keep our audience that you're watching in line with what I think the judges may do. Mark Streisand, Bill Ray, and uh, Michael Pernick are the official judges here. Okay, Eloy Rojas opens up the seventh round with a nice flurry, mostly taken on the gloves of Ricky Quiles. Quiles right in front of him, shaking that left hand as if to say, this is ticketed for your chin, son. Nice feigning movement, the dip of that left shoulder, then Rojas fires with the right hand straight down the middle of the ball. Look at this on the inside, I tell you, Rojas still got it. Well, Rojas, happy that Gillis came right to him, and he showed that he can open it up on the inside, but Gillis, based on the success at the end of last round, just wants to dig that body and continue to go for more. He's showing good conditioning in this fight. Well, he said himself, and I think I mentioned it, that he said he's in the best shape of his life. Now, what happened there? Did the heads come together? He shouldn't turn his back like that, kid. It's just a very dangerous thing to do to a fighter. The guy can get around and sneak around the corner to stand here with a blindside shot. We hear guys talking about being in the best shape of their life, and then some prove it, some don't. But Gillis has come out here and has had a lot of energy to burn late in the rounds, and he's put a lot of combinations together on the inside. We're seeing Aiden. 10 punch attempt by him on the inside, and you can't do that without condition. You know, the thing that, that I thought in the early going is that he, you know, he should box this guy because he was out boxing and handily, but you know, at times when he's decided to mix it up, he's shown that his power shots can get this guy in trouble. There's the left hand again, sort of a looping left hand that turned the head. Oh, he got him with a real good left hand that time. Now he comes to the uppercut, bangs into the body, straight right hand, catching him with shots with both lefts and rights. Nice attack by Keyless again. Now the referee, uh, Mando Garcia, says, hey, make sure you keep those uh, hands up, don't get. Well, they talk about making the other guy uncomfortable. Keyless has slugged when Rojas is used to him boxing, and when Rojas expects the slugging, Keyless goes back to the boxing. He's had a misdirection going on him all night. You know, if I were, if I were Rojas, I'd be thinking the same thing, because everything that I thought that perhaps Keyless should have done, especially early in the fight, he's done the opposite and it's been successful. So the fighter knows what he can do. And the good thing in this case is, is that he's been able to go back and forth between the styles. We talked earlier about how a guy's a boxer and then he gets into a slugging mode and never comes out of it. But Keyless has come out of it enough to make his opponent respect both angles. I tell you, even at age 36, Rojas is a slick fighter. He does a lot of sneaky things in there that a lesser opponent than Keyless is in this kind of shape, this guy could still get out of there. Rojas is a good boxer, but age has taken just that split-second timing that he had uh, a few years ago away from him. And this is a great opponent for Kielis. This is a great job by a matchmaker. Hey! Thank you, Mark. 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 Thank you, Mark.
on the inside now. Nice left hand coming through. Watch how he turns into his shots. Nice leverage. Watch the hips. He turns and gets maximum punching ability in terms of his power. No, he hasn't stopped Rojas, but he's having an impact, and his power shots have been enough to keep Rojas honest. And Kielis is getting everything in, and he's throwing a lot of punches, still looking fresh. All right, here we go, round number eight. <laughs> Kielis, 33-year-old kid, has been off for three years, got his new management with Warriors Boxing. He's got a second win in his career, and he's taking advantage of it against a former world champion, Eloy Rojas, who would like to keep his career going. But these guys, I'm afraid, are in two different directions. One coming up with a shot to move into the top ten, and the other maybe slipping down. And while I say that about Rojas, I'm not taking any credit away from him because he's a crafty old veteran that knows how to box. But even with that, once you put the word former in front of the champion, a lot of fighters will lose any intimidation factor in there. And that's what's happening. Kielis is on the rise and just taking it to a guy. Now he goes downstairs, fishing with that left hand. Rojas again would like to draw him inside and fight him on the inside. And when it's happened on a couple of occasions, namely back in the uh, uh, fourth round, it did uh, Rojas in a lot of trouble. And we thought that perhaps Aquila should uh, just go ahead and box on the outside. Right now, he could just box his way out and win this fight. But that's not the nature of a fighter, David. You well know. Now, we talk about how when you draw it up on X's and O's, that's the easy way to do it. But on the inside, and start to have success. The guy doesn't want to jab if he knows he can slug. The, the real enjoyment and intensity is when you can open it up. You box to be smart, you slug. Really, a lot of times to win the fight. The brawls, and he's been able to do that. And of course, the object of professional boxing is to hurt you. It's different from amateur. All you have to do is touch the guy up. Well, when guys box and they don't have power, you have to, well, it's hit, don't be hit. But sooner or later, you're going to be hit, and you have to have enough power, at least to keep the other guy honest. This is a perfect example. Gillis doesn't have a lot of knockouts, but he's got enough power to overwhelm this guy. Yeah, and lesser opponents, he, he, he takes them out. This is a good, I would say, world-class fighter right now, and it just depends on who he fights and how far he just can go. But again, Rojas, uh, at uh, the stage of his career where he's, you know, got a couple of three more years on Aquiles, and he's a crafty veteran. This is a perfect fight for Aquiles. And uh, coming back, taking on a world champion, former world, world champion, can say what you want, but they're crafty. They have a guy that can duck the gun as well, he becomes a world champ. And it took the title in Korea. You know, I mean, that's a, that's a tall uh, road to hold in itself. The blood is coming from the nose of Rojas. He was split open back in the fourth round. And while it's not significant, it certainly makes for a mess. He's out of 10 seconds to go in the eighth round and just a nice boxing round for Ricky Kielis. Kielis with his back to you. Pack round, but a good boxing round for Kilo. Different way for him to win the fight. This is the outside of the Seminole Casino at Coconut Creek. What a beautiful place. And by the way, folks, uh, up north, this is the place to come in the wintertime. All kinds of bad weather in the north and northeast. Come on down. They've got casinos here in Hollywood, Brighton, Monterey, Tampa. This one here at Coconut Creek is the most big one in all the talk. Is going to be a real showcase of a resort, a destination resort in Hollywood, Florida. That's just about complete, ready to schedule to open up in uh, March of next year. And this reminds me of when Atlantic City began its heyday, and then you had the Midwestern casinos with their heyday, and then you had the casinos in Connecticut. And you have gaming and boxing together with a movement, and uh, this is the beginning of something uh, very special in that game of boxing dynamic right now. Well, it works out great for all of us to get the Seminole Tribe of Florida involved with worldwide boxing, and we are around yeah, the world. There. Orlando Marlowe has done a great job in sales all over the world. We're in, I don't know, 30, 40 countries uh, on a monthly basis now, which is great for the, the gaming part of uh, uh, what the Indian uh, Reservation and Tribe is trying to accomplish for us. Uh, all right, we're in the ninth round. Ricky Kielis in the light blue trunks with the red trim on his shoes. I've got him out in front, 79-73. We're in the ninth round. This is scheduled for 10, and this has been a terrific opening bout here. 
really good boxing. It slowed down just a bit. But this is all Keyless really has to do. You know, he doesn't want to get himself in any trouble. He doesn't really need to mix with this guy. That's not the, the nature of a fighter. He'd like to take him out and knock him out. But right now, if he just outboxes this guy, he can do it. And now he's got points in the bank earning interest. He's way up here, and he just has to protect and then move laterally and do it's naturally instinctive. Yet he showed a lot of fire in his belly, a lot of passion in going inside and being able to hold himself together very well during those inside situations. And he came up against the guy where if Kielos wasn't sharp, the guy would have sneaked up and beat him. Oh, yeah. And he may be one of these guys that likes the tougher guys when he comes back because it brings up another notch in him. Rojas is having a pretty good the ninth round, but, you know, at some stage here with the halfway mark of the ninth round, you see Kielos open up again. At least that's what he's done throughout the course of the fight. In the later rounds, Rojas has had a pretty good first half of the round, then he seems to slow down a bit, and Kielos tries to attack. Gillis had the early edge, and then when Rojas began to make a move at the end of round three, Gillis picked it up the following round and put him in real trouble and turned around the fight for good. Gillis is fighting like a confident guy in spite of the fact that I still think that Rojas has won the first two minutes of this round. He's staying busy enough in there. He's not getting hit with any clean shots. Just sort of being out a little bit right now. Kielos still showing some movement. What's Rojas? He's got to know he's behind in this fight. What's he got to do, Dave? Yeah, you know, he has to go in and gamble with the right hand lead. The things we talked about, yeah. there's an example of it. But he needs more of that. He has to open up and go after Kielos. And it's there for him because Kielos is intent on technique in this round. As you watch what he's doing with his elbow and his shoulder. He's trying to make sure everything lines up perfectly. And for Rojas, he needed to disrupt the rhythm, and he did not. Blood trickles from that nostril of, of Rojas. And this has been a good uh, Rojas boxing round. I think he outboxed Kielos in this round. Well, Kielos landed probably two or three of the heavier blows as the, ah! as the bell ends the ninth round. Good, tough fight. of a lopsided event occurs because Rojas is waiting on Kielis and when you're a counter puncher it's very difficult to win rounds. He's been waiting for Kielis hopefully to make a mistake and Kielis hasn't made that mistake. Yeah I gave Rojas the third round. I gave him the ninth round. I was on my way to giving him the fourth round and then Kielis pulled that one out. But had he not done that you know in that fourth round you'd have a pretty even fight here. Yeah, now you're looking at uh, definitely a two point fight if that hadn't occurred. That was a big turnaround for Kielis. Look at this action, though, Dave, here in the 10th round. Both of these guys won. Big left hook land at that time by Rojas. And Kielis stays right on top of him. Now the referee, Armando Garcia, finally separates the two. Hey, for Kielis coming out of the box, it's not just that he wins, but how he wins tonight. He wants to have a wire-to-wire, -wire, nice effort. He wants to show stamina and intensity at the end of the fight and show that he's got good conditioning to carry forward. They get clipped pretty good on the inside that time by Rojas. Rojas is the consummate professional. Here we are in the fifth round. He's 36 years of age. He's in the fight. He's winning this round. He just, uh, may think he has more points in the bank than he really does in, in reality. He's got the fight won unless he gets clipped and, and knocked down. 
It's no time to horse around with a former world champ with a minute and 20 to go in this fight. And if you're Rojas after this is over, if you lose by, say, three points, or maybe you wonder about waiting and just trying to fight in spurts, which is what he's done many times throughout this fight. But Skillsave has been a good pace. I mean, these guys haven't been hanging on to each other very much. They, uh, they've they stayed separated. They've thrown a lot of punches in this fight. Oh, it's been a busy fight. All, all that true. But once that is said, from Rojas' standpoint, he's been the guy that waited a little bit too oh, long yeah. in the fight. And, and it's frustrating for him to know if he goes back and says, you know what? I was sitting there trying to steal the fight at the end. If I had done a little bit more, I could have been fighting to win it in round 10. 35 seconds to go in the fight. See, Rojas still shows the heart of a champion. He is still winging away. Knows he's behind in the fight. You know, what's interesting is if you get a guy with not a big knockout record and he beats the guy with the knockout record many times, that's not an exciting fight. But this time it was. Yeah, well, this is a really good fight. I thought that uh, you saw it. Southpaw right-handed fighter on the pin sloppy. This time was a nice clean fight on the way. The Cotsman professional Rojas. So look at this finish. Both guys still winging shots in the closing seconds of the fight. There's the bell, and that ends it. It's all over. No doubt in Ricky Keelis' mind how uh, this is going to go. I definitely think he took it. I gave I gave Rojas that last round, and, and based on that, it's uh, only a two-round fight. Uh, uh, you know, you know, it, it's really surprising because in calling the fight throughout the course of the fight, I thought Keelis was just uh, it was a one-sided fight. How about the fact right after he jumps up on the ropes, and no doubt in his mind. If, if this is his, so... Uh, well, there's no doubt in our is, mind either that yeah. Kiedis has won the fight, but it just surprised me when I told him my score up at the end, but it was as close as what I have it here. Well, if you go jumping up on the ropes, you don't think you're one by one. Now, you think you're <laughs> one by five, so <laughs> who knows? Well, we'll find out. We'll wait uh, to make it official for Mark Streisen, Bill Ray, and Michael Pernick, who uh, will have the official scoring. The way Dave and I call the fight is just an indication of the way we see it. And we have Ricky Kielis winning the fight. But uh, I'll tell you this, Eloy Rojas put on a nice show here. He, he really did in the se second half of the fight. He had some opportunities. He was able to counter. And then uh, Kielis slowed down a bit. But Kielis, on the overall, this is an excellent way for him to come out of the blocks. One thing for sure, the crowd in attendance here at the Seminole Casino here in Coconut Creek in Florida, they've enjoyed this fight. That's a good prize fight, believe me. Hey, you've got a guy 33 and 6 versus a guy 38 and 2 and a former champion. And uh, this fight looked like it would be very good on paper, and it worked out that way. 70 wins between the two kids. Not too bad. All right, I see our ring announcer, Damian Pinto, is gathering up the score sheets. And as soon as he's set, we'll be set to make this official. Damian Pinto in the center of the ring. It looks like he has the scorecards collected. So without further ado, let's go to our ring announcer and get the particulars on this one. Here he is, Damian Pinto. Ladies and gentlemen, this one goes the distance and we go to the scorecards. Here are your scores. Judge Ray scores the fight 95-95 even. Judge Pernick scores it 98-92, and Judge Mark Streisand scores this fight 97-93. For your winner by majority decision, Ricky Kills. How about that? One judge, Bill Ray, saw it a lot closer than we saw it. You've got 98-92 and then a draw on the same card. 97-93, I think it was a little bit closer to where I was with that. And, and uh, probably closer to the way I saw the fight too. But uh, that just goes to show you, you just can't let down at all when you're in against a world champ. And obviously, uh, Judge Ray didn't give uh, Ricky Kielis a 10-8 round when I thought that Rojas was in a heap of trouble there in the fourth round. And I thought that you should separate the, the 
you know, the, the easy 10-9 round to score with one that the guy was really staggered. It shows something different between the round that the guy just nosed out 10-9. Uh, 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 anyway, the right guy got it in our opinion yep. as Ricky Kinnis got the majority of decisions on the scorecards of Mark Streisand and Michael Pernick. There was no question about it. Mark Goldberg is in the ring, so let's go to Mark. Mark.